Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA front office show. The trade deadline has come and gone. Somehow we're still here, still standing. It's Keith. I was thinking whether or not we should do like the yell today. And I was like, no, it would just come out like it's front office Friday. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about all the energy I've got. It was a long day yesterday for the trade deadline, but here we are. We've made it. Uh, we got a lot of the fallout to talk about today. We got the buyout market. We've got some injury stuff too to dive into. Uh, Keith, how, how are you holding up? I am still fatigued from yesterday's uh, craziness. All right. So two things. One, you can see in the background, the heating pad is on the arm of my uh -huh. computer and it's not on my back. So that is a, a big plus. Progress. Uh, I'm feel, feeling better. Yeah. I went to the chiropractor today. They they beat me up pretty good and and I'm you know still feeling it, but, but moving forward finally, which is a good thing. Uh, as far as fatigue, yeah, I, I almost texted you last night, but then I was like, eh, I don't want to bother him if he has gone to bed. Cause it was just before four in the morning. Um, and I was like, that's when I ran out of steam. Um, like, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to like, like bug him now. So I, I, I let that go. And I, uh, I just, I, I was trying like, and then I got to the point where I'd written a sentence like seven times and it still didn't really make sense and I was like, <laughs> it's time to call it a night and, and pick this up again tomorrow so yeah but cap sheets are all updated we're still filling in details of some of these deals like what picks were involved mm -hmm. and things like that but for the most part i think we've got everything squared away on the site i've got a few more uh uh trade recaps to write but but we did an updated buyout piece so it, things are good it was it was a busy busy day and a busy evening and early morning but uh that's what coffee is for and if these are the biggest things i have to complain about things are actually really really good yeah right i mean we we can't complain too much it's we know we know going in it's going to be a busy day uh, i went to bed it would have been about 3 30 in the morning your time maybe it was 3 45 something All like right. that so, so right right close mm -hmm. Yeah. Would have been close. Would have been close. Would have been just enough that I would have annoyed you. I yeah, I, like as I was falling asleep, <laughs> my phone would have done that. And I would have yeah. been like, "What's uh -oh. happening? Did, yep. some, did an, another trade happen? What, what went down here?" <laughs> yeah, um, really late. Still one. not the Lakers. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have uh, I have here an an open document with the title blank for the basketball bulletin. Which, by the way, everybody should go check out and subscribe. Uh, subscribe to. I'll put the link in the description down below with all my my de trade deadline n notes that I planned on starting that I still have not started. That 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 is coming soon. But that's where where I'm at. Like I've meant to get to that a bunch of times, and and everything else has just piled up. So, been yeah, a busy I didn't time. do game notes today on the yeah. basketball bulletin because I just I watched games last night, but I watched them while working, and then this morning I was working. Once I woke up, I didn't. I, my normal routine. This is probably okay to share because people ask me pretty regularly how sure. am I able to watch so many games in my normal routine is I watch two games a night at least um but I'll hop around other games too but I always watch at least two games every night and then in the morning I have a like I have a spreadsheet I, I like to try to see every team roughly equally um so what I do is if I notice there's a team boy, I haven't checked in on them in like a week or so I'll pull up a game and I try to find games where it's not necessarily a 30 point blowout because you just don't get a lot out of those. So I try to, um, you know, go and I'll also make notes during the night. Like if I see a lot of people on Twitter talking about the uh, from a couple nights ago, the Pistons Kings game. I'll make a note to put that on the list. And then I watch the, uh, I, sometimes I watch through the DVR and I fast forward myself. And other times I watch the condensed game versions of possessions only. And that's how I'm able to plow through a whole bunch of that's these so games. Helpful. Um, yeah, it, it's big time. If you, if you want to really watch a game, you can go. And then there's other tools um, that I have that, you know, it, it's just things some of us in the industry use where you can watch individual players, you can watch their possessions only and things like that. Those are, uh, you know, not widely available and they're also uh, fairly uh, uh, cost prohibitive to just for a fan to just get, but it's worth it for, for me. So that's, that's kind of what it, I normally do. 
today, last night and today, that that was not part of the thing at all. I I, yeah. I did watch a lot of Lakers Nuggets because it was the late game last night yeah. and it was there and it, it was on and that for a little while it wasn't all that dialed in. And then the Lakers came back and made a game of it, as I know you know. So then mm-hmm. I got tuned in more in the second half. But it was uh yeah, so just a weird, weird day. So I apologize to anybody that there were no game notes. I'll get back to them tomorrow morning. Well, we'll uh, we'll have that out again over on bas- on the basketball bulletin. Which, uh, once again, guys, you guys can check that out over on Substack. That is a great way to support us directly. Um, basketball bulletin is something that that Keith and I have been putting a lot of a lot of time, a lot of effort into. As always, it's right, I guess, right there. Um, so you guys can check it out. I'll drop the link in the description down below. We'd appreciate it if you guys would go check that out and subscribe. Uh, we literally made it as cheap as Substack will allow us to make it because we wanted to be accessible to as many people as we can. So go check that out. Again, that's the Basketball Bulletin. Um, all right, let's get into, uh, I guess, I guess let's because everybody's already moving on to the buyout market. Let's just jump right into the, the buyout market itself. There's a number of players out there. Marcus Morris, Spencer Dinwiddie, Robin Lopez now. Uh, is there anybody that hit the buyout market so far that you were surprised hit the market? Um, I mean, it's, it's now like a full day later, but Dinwiddie was, yeah. was not somebody I had on my radar that I, I thought would be a buyout guy. I didn't think he would be, uh, anyone who is gonna, gonna land on the market at and, any point. And um, technically he's one. just a, he's just getting waved, right? He's not even te- yeah, a he true was just buyout. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Because so that's, and that's a good clarification. A buyout generally happens when the player is pursuing moving on from a team Mm -hmm. um so in the case of kyle lowry the charlotte hornets are basically going to say which lowry has not been officially bought out yet we all expect it will come but it has not happened as of yet but what uh what happens is lowry goes to them and says i don't really want to be here i want to go play somewhere else and then the hornets come back and say great give us back some money and generally what they're looking for is at least give us back the amount you're going to make on your yeah. next deal. Um, sometimes it's more, you know, every once in a while we see a player like when Kemba Walker did his buyout with the Oklahoma city thunder, he gave up considerable money to get out of the deal with the thunder so that he could go to, to the Knicks. And that was because the thunder had made it clear. You're not going to play like we're, we, we acquired you as a contract and to get the draft pick and you're just going to sit. So, so buyouts can be a little bit complicated. Straight waivers are the case where the team says, yeah, we don't want the player and see you later. So Dinwiddie, the Raptors, they came out. The Raptors didn't want to pay him a bonus that he would have gotten yeah. uh, fairly soon if he'd played in a few more games for them. So they wave him and let him go. Victor Oladipo was a straight waiver from the Grizzlies. Clearly, he's not going to give any money back at the point of uh, he's in in his career. So, so yeah, it works a little bit differently. But to answer your question, yeah, Dinwiddie was probably the, the most surprising guy. Um, who who ended up with a uh, um, buyout just because or a, a waiver rather um, because I just didn't really see that one coming. It wasn't on my radar uh, that that would be a thing. Yeah, um, when you look at Dinwiddie, is he the is he just automatically the top player on the market? Yeah, probably. Um, I, I think he I, probably is. Yeah, I, I would say so. Just because he, he has the experience, he hasn't been very good this year. He has shot yeah. like shot crap. Probably this season um but a guy who's generally been a pretty good scorer pretty good playmaker so yeah i I think he's probably the top guy i think um marcus morris uh when the spurs eventually do do uh wave him um i I think he'll have value to some teams as a backup uh big he's shooting 40 percent from three this year and it's not it's not a massive sample size but it's, it's enough where you feel like, okay, that combined with his prior history, that feels kind of real. So I think he's somebody who could help teams. And then a very interesting guy, because it's just normally this doesn't happen, is Killian Hayes. Yeah. Uh, he's in a very um, interesting spot because he's only 22, and him getting waived is you know basically the Pistons saying, like, yeah, we're, we're done. We're, it's not going to happen here, so good luck to you. And then we'll see, you know, where that kind of kind of comes together uh, going forward um, with uh, Killian Hayes. So um, they just an interesting guy because of that. But contenders, I don't know, they're going to be like jumping on getting Killian Hayes. Where like Dinwiddie, Morris, those guys will Dinwiddie, Morris. So the challenge is both of them make more than the uh, 
uh, non-taxpayer MLE of $12.4 million. So they're limited. They can't go to those apron teams. What about uh, Robin Lopez being out there on the market? Does he have any? I mean, what, I believe he's 35, if I'm remembering correctly. Um what what are your thoughts there? Is he it, could he go be a backup big somewhere, or do you think that's just kind of that's it for him, and he's going to get ready for his uh, Disney vacation? <laughs> yeah, um, which is funny. Did you see he was apparently at the game last night, and he was sitting there reading a book? No, uh, like I didn't. Behind the bench, yeah. Which yeah, game was he, at? He was at. I the, think he was at the Bucks game. At the Bucks, so um, he still went yeah. to the game anyway. Yeah, and just I hung think out? so. At least, at least it's what it looked like was going on. Maybe, maybe I'm off. Maybe it's an old picture. But he was definitely like sitting huh. in an arena, like reading a book um, while funny. it was going on. So he also maybe had like the tweet of the deadline, where he's like, "That I, you know, Patrick Beverly and I were teammates for 45 minutes. I always cherish that, that <laughs> time together, which is pretty funny." Um, there, That's so, awesome. I think Lopez, if you're a team that needs a third big and you could just use a good locker room presence, yeah, you you could do worse than Robin Lopez. But when he's played this year and even when he's played the last couple of years, it just kind of looks like it's gone. I just don't know how much he has left in yeah. the tank. He doesn't really move very well anymore. And that's that's a major challenge for him. So I they I think it's you know we're we're really close to the end of the road and and we might be there already. But it wouldn't surprise me if a team is looking around and saying, "Man, we got open roster spots. We've got injuries. Let's let's bring bring Robin Lopez in because at least you know he knows what he's doing out there." But I think we're at the point where the mind knows what it's doing and I know how capable the body is. Yeah. Yeah, that and that's going to be, of course, the challenge with with him is is what happens with uh, where he lands and then what kind of a role he's in. If you're if you're expecting, and most of the bio guys, if you're expecting them to come in and play a big role, you're probably asking for too much. But can they just be somebody that come in and fill a role for a team? That's really all you're looking for. Um, all right, so the bio market. Obviously, there's a number of teams that that can't sign players on the bio market or can't sign players that are are coming off contracts that are above the MLE. Looking at where these guys might land, it feels like the most certain thing, and by no means is this a lock, but Kyle Lowry ultimately landing in Philadelphia sure seems like a thing that's that, that's going to happen. Yeah, it seems like that's where he'll probably go. That's been uh, reported for a while. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, I think some of it was putting pieces together a little he's from there. Maybe they could use a guard, but I think them trading uh, Patrick Beverly, there's, there's some rumors coming out. They may not keep campaign uh, moving forward. And if they, they do let campaign go, then yeah, I think that that's an even further sign that Kyle Lowry is going to head there. And that's fine. You know, probably again, we're probably clear, pretty close to the end of the line for Kyle Lowry. So he gets to finish it at home on a pretty good team. Yeah. Why, why not? Right. It seems, it seems like to be a, it, it almost seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. Speaking of, of him, I've I've heard specifically that it, it's down to the Lakers and the Mavs for Spencer Dinwiddie. Now another team could certainly come in, but uh, that sounds like the choice he's making. And he was at the Knicks Mavs game last night, so <laughs> yeah. perhaps the, he's tipping his hand there in terms of where he's going. The Mavs made some really great moves. We'll talk about them in a bit when we get into the uh, the buy or the trade deadline in general, but. Uh, Dinwiddie's down to the Lakers or, or the Mavs. Uh, Marcus Morris, uh, Joe Harris. What do you see as landing spots for some of these guys? Yeah, I think, you know, Orlando should probably take a look at Joe Harris. I think he would uh, really fit there. I think whoever doesn't get Dinwiddie could look at Harris, maybe even Morris. Um, I don't know about the Lakers, but that seems to be dead. Now you're adding too many. Uh, forward size guys. You've already got LeBron and Rui and uh, Torian Prince. So I don't know that I would go that route. Harris makes some sense, I think, for them potentially. I, you know, Joe Harris hasn't played all year, but even in the last couple years and down years for him, he was still an elite shooter. So if if that's all you need and you feel like you can protect him, I think Phoenix is probably going to be somewhat active now. Again, they can't get Harris or Morris or Dinwiddie, but they're going to get somebody who who gets waived here. Furkan Korkmaz was waived. He could be a guy who makes sense for them just to get a chance because they moved out a ton of their their players in that three team trade uh, where they brought back uh, to who who was it now? It was, uh, Royce O'Neal and David Roddy. Uh, so they've got two open roster spots. So it's it, it, I, I think. 
the challenges you instantly want to go to of all the the better teams, but some of those better teams can't sign some of these guys. Minnesota could maybe make sense for Harris. They don't really have a true kind of small forward on the no. roster outside of Jaden McDaniel. So he could be a guy who could make some sense there. Philly, um, you know, for now it can't be Morris cause he can't return there, but they've got three open roster spots. The Knicks have three open roster spots that they're going to fill at some point. So they, I, I think, you know, those guys they, maybe Harris or Morris to new Orleans could, could make some sense. Yeah, the sense. Falcons don't have a, um, necessarily like the traditional power forward so it there there's a lot of landing spots that make sense for these guys and then we always say what what the players prioritize is can i win and can I, and am i gonna play because the money's gonna be the same pretty much everywhere but every once in a while a team has some of an exception left over and they can outbid other teams but a lot of those teams are in a spot where hey, it's only going to be a prorated vet minimum that's what we can offer and when it's the same everywhere else, you start looking and saying, all right, are they going to win? And, and am I going to play a real role? And that, that can be the tiebreaker. Yeah, exactly. These guys want an opportunity to show that they should get a new contract this coming summer. So that's that's obviously going to be important. They have to have a role. And then the ability to win games. And and you know what? Look, uh, I don't know off the top of my head what what playoff revenue would look like for a player that's off that's off of a buyout, but that's something that could factor in, you know, financially sure. if you're on a team that's going to go deep into the playoffs. But beyond that, these guys are veterans that would like to just win in general, and they also know that the spotlight of playing a role on a team that goes deep in the playoffs that's also going to help them uh, in terms of getting that next deal in the summertime. So these are the things that that matter to these guys. Um, it's important to note. To, as we try to figure out the landing spots for these players, they're going to want to know, you know, what the role is going to be, uh, what, what kind of minutes are they going to be getting, and then, uh, and yeah. then, do they have a chance to win? Do they have a chance to go deep into the playoffs? And what does that look like? So, uh, the buyout market is certainly something that we'll monitor here. Uh, what players that got waived yesterday? What would that be? They clear waivers tomorrow, I believe. Uh, and it it depends on when they got waived. If they were waived before five p.m. yesterday clear on saturday if it was after 5 p.m no clear on sunday okay okay so we should start hearing pretty soon where some yeah. of these guys are going to wind up going and then and uh, usually you know. we hear it before like they even clear waivers because like in the case of dinwiddie joe harris marcus morris their contracts are too big they're not going to get claimed i'm off waivers by anybody so so yeah so we'll 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 know fairly soon on all these guys all right so and then the date what... to watch just because people say people are always like, when does buyout season end? It, it technically doesn't, but yeah. the important date is March 1st. March 1st is the last day to waive a player and have them still be eligible to play on a team, uh, play in the playoffs. So that is, uh, that's the kind of date we, we keep an eye on more or less mm -hmm. at that point. Some guys have been waived after that. Uh, famously, uh, Rodney Magruder, uh, one year, the Heat waived him and the Clippers claimed him. And the Clippers were, this was when they were in the middle of several years in a row of making the playoffs with like the Chris mm -hmm. Paul teams and that. And Rodney Magruder couldn't play in the playoffs because he was waived like March like 10th or 11th or something right. like that. So so those, those happen every once in a while, but that March 1st date. But to be clear, March 1st is the date the player has to be waived by. You can sign Not guys claimed. all the way through the last day of the regular season. Wouldn't that Shout be something if, if like, it wouldn't be something if like a player got waived like now and then got picked up the day before, like, like with Spencer Dinwiddie could jump onto a team the day before the end of the season yeah. and become like a playoff contributor for some team. That never happens though, at least as far as I can no. recall. Yeah. But, I will say with the uh, trade deadline moving ahead of the all-star break, I'm not going to out the players, but I know of a few different players who have uh, delayed their buyout signing till after the all-star break because they get a little they bit want longer vacation. Of vacation. So, you know, and it's, it were guys who made pretty good money and didn't really, it wasn't like, Hey, I need to sure. get right back on a contract. It was, yeah, hey, I'm good. I can delay. And then I'll, I'll sign in the couple of days after the all-star break and meet up with the team as they get back together. Cause every team comes back together for almost like a mini training camp yeah. for about two, two or three days ahead of uh game starting up again. So, uh, you know, everybody thinks the all-star break is a super long period. 
guys really get about three or four days off. And if they go to the actual all-star game, they might only get like two or two or three days, like truly if, off. If anything. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. That, that said that last day is one of the funniest days in the locker room because like you, when you cover a team regularly in person, um, as I've done with both the Magic and the Celtics, uh, you know who the guys are that the game ended two hours ago and they're just finishing their shower and then they're going to come meet with the media. Yep. And you're just sitting there waiting. You're getting super aggravated because it's like, I just want to finish. And especially if you're trying to file a post-game story yes. that you need quotes for or whatever. You you know this um, with the Lakers. and mm-hmm. But – the day before the all-star game, that same dude will be like, Hey, you guys need me right now. Like he's still in uniform and he's like ready to go. I watched a magic player one time, literally pull on a pair of sweatpants and a hoodie over his game uniform. It was like, does anybody need me? No. All right. See you guys later. I'll see you in a week. And he's he like, I'm left. out. <laughs> go <laughs> straight to the, pl- go straight to the airport. Yeah. It was a funny thing. It was like the closest I've ever seen to like, like a youth basketball game, right? Where your kid's already in their uniform and you drop them off at the gym and then you pick yeah. them up in there. It's still in uniform. It was really funny. He's like, and I'm out. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was out off to an island somewhere. Direct to the airport, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it is. Everybody goes somewhere warm. Yep. Like, you'll, you'll, you're you you going to hear it in the next couple of days. Guys are going to start talking about it. Like, I'm, I don't blame they're, them. They're ready to go somewhere warm. I don't so, blame them. Want to get right. into a couple of actual transactions? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, um, part of the fallout of, of the trade deadline is um, teams start making some uh, you know adjustments uh, to to the mm-hmm. back end of the roster. So one we've been talking about for a little bit. We talked about on yesterday's show. The Memphis Grizzlies cleared a roster spot and they signed Gigi Jackson to a four year deal. Jackson uh, was a draft pick of the Grizzlies. Had played this year on a two way contract and he um, had really played well for Memphis. So he follows the same path Vince Williams. Uh, followed earlier this year. So now the two of them are on standard contracts. Going to be, we don't know the details yet, but probably pretty similar type deals. So really good value contracts for the Grizzlies as well. Mm -hmm. But kudos to these guys for earning the way off the two-way. And then Trey Jemison, who had impressed with the Grizzlies on a hardship 10 day as half that roster is injured, uh, he backfills Jackson on a two-way contract. So he, he's going to go in and take a two-way. So the you know shouts uh, there to Memphis making those moves. And I, I like Jemison. He was a guy I had in my G League uh, players to watch piece before 10-day season started. Uh, if you haven't seen him, he's super athletic, big, uh, really He's more of a traditionally athletic big. He doesn't shoot the ball. Out his range is in inches, not feet. Um, but he's around the basket a lot. He's a great rebounder. Um, Memphis has some uh, work to do at the center position after some of their moves at the deadline with uh, Stephen Adams and Xavier Tillman. So he may may yet factor in. We'll, we'll see. We'll find out. I kind of have a thought that could be Memphis loves to do two-year two-ways. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if Jemison turns out to be a two-year two-way. And then in Sacramento, Keon Ellis, who had been a big part of the rotation early in the year, uh, he got uh, converted. So Robin Lopez is waived uh, from the Kings, and uh, Keon Ellis is going to be converted over to. I believe he signed a three-year deal uh, with Sacramento, so he'll be he'll be with the Kings uh, coming off of his two-way contract, which is is big. He was their backup point guard early on. He he's actually been better than Davian Mitchell this season. So now that he's on a standard deal, wouldn't be surprised if the Kings start kicking him a few more minutes. Yeah. Last thing that's... we'll say. Oh, oh so yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. You you go. I was just going to say on the two-way deals. Some guys are coming up on their maximum games. Uh, it's 50 mm-hmm. games active, not 50 games played. 50 games active for every player. Once you hit that, you can't be active for any more games. And if the team wants you, they have to convert you over. And even if you have games left at the end of the year, two-way players are not playoff eligible. So we're going to see a handful of these teams uh, continue to make two-way conversions. And there's there are a lot of open roster spots right now between yeah. reported waivers and actual waivers and unbalanced trades and stuff. There's over 30 open roster spots in the league right now, which is double what there usually is. Yeah. There's uh that's going to create a lot of opportunities for some of these players, both on the buyout market, as well as other guys on either on two way deals to jump up to full contracts or some guys to jump out of the G league. Um, so there's going to be a flurry of moves here over the next, you know, month or so. It's not not necessarily going to happen right now, except for the teams that are, you know, below 14. Those teams are going to have to move sooner than others. But um, we're going to see a lot of players get opportunities here in the next few weeks. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, with that, it turns into, we'll see a lot of 10 days. We'll see probably mm-hmm. some, like I said, two way conversions. Obviously the buyout guys will sign for the rest of the year. You may even see a couple of them uh, come back around on a 10 day deal where like Joe Harris, maybe he signs a 10 day with somebody to show, Hey, I, I, I can still play. And, and we've seen that there used to be 10 days where something veteran players would never sign. And that changed about four or five years ago where vets were like, yeah, I'll do a 10 day. I'll come in Uh training camp contracts too. veteran players very rarely sign those. And now we see pretty regularly guys sign training camp deals and then they make the roster out of training camp. So it's just a ch- change in, in the way, you know, people's perception is and those kind of things. It's a, uh, it's a little bit different. So a lot, a lot, lot of, minor transactional stuff to come probably really, I would say over the next month ish, three weeks, month, um, you know, it'll, it'll go quick here. Then everything will pause for the all-star break and then it'll pick back up when we get going through the end of February. All right, let's, uh, we should mention this. OG Ananobi did wind up having surgery on his elbow, uh, removing some fragments. Sounds like he's out for probably around three weeks or so, maybe a little bit more. And that's, Obviously, that makes it all the more important that the Knicks made the moves that they did, in particular landing uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, because he can help to to fill that role while OG and Anobi is out. The Knicks have been playing great basketball. Um, so this, uh, again, it's not ideal, but it's not like Ananobi is out for the season or anything like that. And uh, Keith, I know we're going to get into trade deadline fallout. Uh, the, the Knicks, I, I think they're in, they're in really good shape this year. And I'm really curious to see what they're going to do this summer because now there's rumblings that they may be chasing after a star this summer too. Yeah, I think they uh, – I, I was going to say quietly, but it's the Knicks, so I don't know anything. <laughs> there's nothing quiet. quiet. Um, but they had a really good good uh, trade season. Let's just you – know, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. rope in the Ananobi trade into to this. So, yeah, really went well for them. And that tr- trade yesterday was great. We'll, we'll get into that more. Yeah, the Ananobi being out. Now, if there's – such a thing is a good thing with timing with an injury. Part of that three weeks is the all-star break. So that's the time that he won't miss any games. So that's at least mm-hmm. a plus there. It, it's sure. probably, my guess is this will probably be three weeks after this. We'll hear he's ramping up activity. And then probably two days after that, Tibbs will have him play 45 minutes and you know, we'll see how it goes. So because that's just what Tibbs does, right? He just, you know, oh, you're you can walk, get out there, you know, rub some dirt on it, be tough. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 you know, I think it'll be uh hopefully they get these guys back, right? And they're they're ready to go. Yeah. All right, let's uh let's just kind of bounce around the trade deadline a little sure. bit. You mentioned the, the you know the Knicks. I, I liked what they did at the trade deadline, including the the OG and Anobi trade. Um I also thought another big winner was Dallas, you know, getting Daniel Gafford, who now very well might be the best backup big in, in the NBA with uh, him and, and Derek Lively create quite a, a tandem there at center for them. And then at landing PJ Washington as well, um, Dallas has positioned themselves to move up in the Western Conference. So those are the two teams to me that really stood out as the big, you know, quote unquote winners of, of the trade deadline, in my opinion. Yeah. on. The Dallas front two, they've won three in a row now, but they've been slipping prior to that. They had not been playing very well. And they dropped out of they dropped out of the top six. And they were down uh prior to this little win streak here. They were down closer to the Lakers Jazz Warriors mm-hmm. uh, range than I think a lot of people would have realized. So they needed to do something. Uh in admission that the Grant Williams trade, their sign and trade acquisition didn't work. And now there's a lot of reports that he rubbed people the wrong way in that. And Grant, I can tell you, he's a specific kind of personality. He's somebody who, with the Celtics, they treated him like a goofy little brother, and they just kind of you know, laughed a lot of his stuff off. And every once in a while when they needed to, they put him in his place. And I don't know if in Dallas it was too much of that or where it was or where it went. So they they seemed pretty clear that it was, this is not working. We're getting out of this contract. And Williams and Washington are pretty similar ish kind of guys. They do a lot of the same types of things, which is Mm -hmm. space the floor a little bit, play the four, play the five a little, a kind of, kind of do that stuff for my money. I think Williams is a better big defender. I think Washington's a little bit better versatile uh, versatility wise on defense. Uh, Williams is a better passer. Washington's probably the uh, overall better score. Williams is a better spot up shooter, but pretty similar kind of guys. It's I, I don't, 
love that they had to give up a first round pick in that trade. That sure. that part gets a little weird. It's, a, to, it's to at me. least isn't it, it, it on the top of my head? It's a little protected, isn't it? Yeah, but it's like ridiculous. Two? A little protected. Yeah, it's top yeah. two protected. That's not. And it's idea. top two protected the first year that uh, Luca could potentially be gone. Um, mm. which I don't think is going to be a thing. I don't think he goes anywhere, but it's, you know, at least you did a little something on that one. So, but the Gafford move, I love, I, I think that was a great get. They, they didn't give up a whole lot to get him. Yeah. Uh, Rashawn Holmes is, was not a part of their rotation. So now Gafford comes in, he's a huge upgrade over Dwight Powell, um, but Powell's still there. So now you've got three pretty good center options there, there in Dallas and Derek Lively. The only knock on him is a rookie season is he hasn't been able to stay on the floor i uh, continue continues to get hurt i think it's uh i think it's been mostly ankle issues for him so let's see you know where all this goes but yeah i mean dallas did well to go back to new york i mean completely reshaped large chunks of the rotation and did it without sending out a single first round pick mm-hmm. which is pretty remarkable and they didn't give up a first in the ananobi trade or in the uh bogdanovich perks trade so they they're they're set up pretty good. I like the Thunder getting Gordon Hayward. Yes. Um if that works and Hayward gets healthy, major if there, right? If if he does, now you have your Josh Giddy replacement when teams are just completely disregarding him on offense, which is how we're seeing we've seen more and more teams defend him that way. I watched the one of the games that I think it was a Lakers game, if I remember right. Maybe mm-hmm. I have this wrong. And I think AD just they they put AD on him and AD didn't guard him. I may be off on that. They they did um, give him a bunch of well, the Lakers give open threes to a lot to of a people lot of guys, though. But, so yeah. that I don't I can't I can't hundred <laughs> percent say that that was strategy. That might just be bad basketball. I'm not sure. I, I can tell you with the Celtics, they had Porzingis guarding him, but it was in name only. And the Celtics theory was, hey, if Josh Giddy hits five, six threes and beats us tip your cap, you move on, and you, you go to the next game. So now if that's happening and Giddy's not hitting, you just put Hayward in and you can't play Gordon Hayward that way. Maybe in a team where he has less less of a role, less minutes, mm-hmm. maybe you can keep a little little healthier. Yeah, we'll see. If nothing else, they cleared out a little bit more long-term salary. If the Hayward thing completely doesn't work, the Thunder can have $30 million in cap space this summer. And I know everybody's going to be like, Jeez. for what free agent, right? Right. It doesn't matter. That puts you in play to do just about anything you need to do. And it's not like that team's coming in with like, well, we need a point guard and we need a backup small forward and we need a shot blocker and we need an extra big. Like they, they basically come in and be like, yeah, we maybe need like one or two things. 30 million. Let's go. Like they're, well, they're set up really, really well. Or Keith, what about this? What about star x hits the market okay yeah. so you can say hey here's 15 picks yeah and we don't even have to send you back the full salary yep yeah yeah you, you, yeah you want you want one of our okay young guys like you want yeah. josh giddy in a trade you you want uh you know I, I don't know one of the bench guy you know case and wallace and you know 27 picks between the first and second rounds okay yeah. let's go Let, let's let's make it happen so yeah they're, they're in a great spot and now the hope is Let's hope they get Hayward on the floor because I think he can really, really help them. I saw this I morning like he's what, out through the All Star break. Yeah, I think that's which is that's, a, a week away, but still. Yeah, so and that's probably more of just hey, let's you know good stay stay out. We'll get you going when we get back together after the break. You know that's kind of that's a, a good note too. Is that it, looking just around the league right now? Anybody who's projected to come back anytime in the next like few days for a lot of teams, they'll say, eh, I mean, might as well just give them a few yeah. extra days. And then you get the whole week of the all-star break too for the guy to recover. So just keep that in mind. Like anybody who's close to coming back, a lot of times that just gets pushed to, okay, let's just make it after the all-star break. And then they can really be fully back back. Yeah. Cause they're, yeah. Especially if it's, Hey, you, you're 90% just wait like there's yeah. no reason especially if it's a really good team if you're if you're scrapping for every win maybe you feel a little bit different and it's like hey we gotta get you out there i also like that the trade deadline i thought charlotte did a pretty good job if we again call it trade season they got off terry rogier's long-term contract mm-hmm. they, they get off of pj washington's long-term contract they they did take back some money, so they took back Grant Williams' contract. They took back a couple years for Trey Mann and uh, Vasily Misich. 
but they, they did really well. They added some draft capital. I think we're finally seeing the Hornets maybe setting a direction a little bit of, all right, some of this stuff hasn't worked. Let's really try to reset. The big test will be we get to July 1st and it's the Charlotte Hornets gave third tier free agent X, a four year deal for 120 million. It's going to be like, what, what are we doing? We're same old Hornets, right? So we, we, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve full judgment until we see what they do with this newfound space. And, and all reports are, it started to buzz yesterday morning and really picked up uh, through the day yesterday. They're going to do what they can to get Miles Bridges re-signed there. Hmm. We talked about that yesterday, so we'll, we'll, we'll see you know, where, what that all comes out to be. You know, I, I wonder when thinking about what that contract could look like and, and not even getting into exactly what the figures would be, but I think back to like Zion's contract and how the Pelicans built in some protections in there from for for him in the event of injuries and things of that nature. I wonder if we see something similar on a on a new deal for Miles Bridges. Like, are there some outs? Are there some qualifiers in the contract and things like that? Just given the the history that we always talk about when when Miles Bridges comes up, it'll be interesting to see how they structure that. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, may, maybe they could do something around games played and availability sure. and all those kind of things. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, that, that, that's a good call. I could see that being a thing. Um, all right, any th- any other teams that you want to talk about at the trade deadline before we uh, um, I, get a little I mean, rest, I guess? <laughs> I don't know what the heck Chicago's doing. Like, right? And Karnasevich press conference was just mind boggling. Like he he said, ownership has given him the uh, go ahead to do a full rebuild, but he doesn't think that's where they're at and that's what they need. So apparently he's the only one that watches that team and doesn't feel that way. Uh, you know, and it's funny cause people are like, Hey, they've, they're winning games right now. Yeah. They're six and four in their last 10. They're still under 500. Like let's not, don't, don't, don't play in your parade just yet. Um, right. Atlanta kind of just sitting, not kind of like fully sitting off the deadline. It was yeah. weird. Brooklyn had a little bit of a weird trade deadline. Um, yeah. What was with the, the Dennis Schroeder thing? Like that, that was strange, especially yeah. when you can get, when you had Spencer Dinwiddie, you would have cleared his salary off the books. Instead, you got Dennis Schroeder to kind of do the same sort yeah. of stuff. They're not the exact same player, but, and his contract goes into next season. What? Yeah. And that my guess was, was so surprising. They seem to have this whole thing lined up for 2025 is going to be their big run at okay. a ton of cap space and all that. So I think what their idea was, Hey, rather than have to, battle with somebody to take a one-year deal next year to be our point guard let's just turn Dinwiddie into a guy who has two years left okay did that with Schroeder now the Dennis Schroeder Cam Thomas backcourt is has the potential to be absolutely hilarious like there's times when the other guys should probably just stay on the other end of the floor because I don't (laughs) think all you're doing is setting screens and chasing offensive rebounds so you know and I and I say this as someone who I love Cam Thomas like I yeah he, I think he's a lot of fun. I don't, I, I like watching Cam Thomas from afar with no real rooting interest. I will also own that. Uh, he very much reminds me of old school Jordan Clarkson, where it's like, oh, oh yeah. this is going up. There's, there's some stuff happening here. No conscience. He, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a little bit with that. Um, you know, I, I'm not surprised Denver did nothing. I. I, there was just nothing. Yeah, I mean, all, all we were hearing for them was maybe they try to get a backup guard, and I'd imagine yeah. that you know on the buyout market when there's some some players become available, they'll be a, a yeah, suitor maybe. there. But they don't yeah. they don't need to do much. Yeah, like that, much. their continuity yeah. is actually a, is a weapon for them. Yeah, big time. Um, Sacramento kind of surprising. Like yeah. they you know Sam Amick had a piece today at the Athletic where it was like the Kings just anything they got deep into the the price became too much for them. And they, they were like, we're not giving up multiple first round picks. And they, they took Keegan Murray off the board very early on. So, so that one's a little surprising. And then, you know, the Warriors Lakers, I think that was a little, we talked about that quite a bit yesterday sure. already. So, you know, I don't know. And then for a bad team that did nothing, Portland, you know, I, I guess they can roll it all over to next year and figure it out this summer. But those are the ones that kind of jumped out. I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of other stuff to do, but I'm kind of just, I've got an idea rattling around my head of, you know, teams that didn't do anything in trade season that I may write about. And if I do, you rest assured, I'll tell everybody about it here and how to find it. I like it. I like it. I think that's a good idea. Um, all right. 
Well, no big names moved at the trade deadline, which is what we expected. Mm -hmm. But now we focus on the playoff race. Now we focus on the buyout market, everything that's going to be happening there. And uh, believe it or not, we are well past the halfway halfway point now. Yep. All-star break is coming. And next thing you know, Keith, we're going to be talking playoffs. Two months. I mean, yeah. two months, the season's over. Like, we're... We're we're getting down to it. I mean, this is the these are the dog days, right? Leading up to the the All Star break, and then the teams will come back. And it's you know, I know a lot of people say don't trust anything you see in March, and for some teams that's true. But mm -hmm. you know, it's like, like like it's funny. I keep people are losing their minds right now, right? Boston has the best record in the league, and they also have the second easiest schedule in the league. Now, some of that is they don't play themselves and everybody else sure. does. So their, their, their numbers get a little wonky. It's also like when people are like, Detroit has a hard schedule. And it's like, well, yeah, cause they don't play. They don't Detroit. get to play Detroit. <laughs> right. So like, that was like a whole thing there. But I think with the, the Celtics, like they're going to lose a couple of these games to probably teams that quite frankly, they should beat. And I think it's going to be strictly out of, they're not going, I don't know how many games they have left, like 38 games or whatever. They're not going 38. No, the rest of the way. Right. Yeah. So, there's going to be weird losses in there and people are going to panic and all that stuff. And it's just kind of how it goes. But yeah, I, I think, you know, the top of the West is so packed and then you get into the middle uh, around the six line where it's that fight for those final couple of short playoff spots. That That's mm -hmm. we, we've got a lot of fun uh, basketball to come this year. And I'm really excited. And I always love when we get back from the all-star break and it's like, all right, let's see these new teams, these teams that made changes. Right. Let's see what they look like for the first time uh, together. So we'll, we'll get glimpses of that here in the next week, but that'll really pick up um, after the all-star break. Uh, so Thursday, the 15th is the last day of NBA games before the all-star break. There's only three games that night yep. and it's Bucks, Grizzlies, Warriors, Jazz, Timberwolves, Blazers, everybody else in the league, they're off on vacation by, by yep. this point, right? A lot of guys are, are seriously on the beach while these games are being played. Yeah, I, I am I'm look like in some ways looking forward, but to the absolute shenanigans that we're gonna see in those games that night, because there's gonna be some bizarre things happen. Even in the night before Wednesday night, you're gonna have you're gonna see the teams that are um what is it kind of the, the senioritis of the NBA, right? <laughs> there's a little Where, bit of that, sure. There you're, we're going to be seeing some of that for sure. Um, those kind of games just have a, a little weirdness to them, where you can tell players are they're playing basketball, but their minds are also a little bit a little bit elsewhere. Yeah. And maybe <laughs> generally, maybe through this weekend after the trade deadline, you're going to see some teams, especially teams that made a bunch of changes. You might see weird lineups. You might see yeah. goofy stuff because it just sometimes it takes a few days for guys to uh, one the trades to go. Trades are official, but then to be fully locked in, there might be physicals that need to happen sure. and all that stuff. And nobody can play until everybody's bought off on everything. And then sometimes there's cases where guys come in and teams are, Hey, we need you to practice for, you know, we need to get in a couple practices. Like mm -hmm. we, we, like I've been saying with, with Boyan Bogdanovich where the Knicks are at, it's probably going to be, are right, you know, three different plays and two of our coverages get out there. Like we need you on the floor, go. Uh, and then other teams might be like, "No, nah, we can take a little bit more time." So sometimes you see, you know, really weird lineups. Like like Detroit had to play a kind of goofy lineup last night because they they didn't have a lot of guys available. So they they um they basically I think they had like eight or nine guys available, and they ran with Jalen Duran and Mike Muscala up front together. And they've done that one other time, I think, just to get a look at it. But like that's a little like all right, that, is that that's not a real thing like that's that's not going to be so uh utah is playing they're back to the big ball lineup so we're just going to see weird stuff um over the next little bit but it, it'll all come come back around and settle in here and in by, by the end of the weekend and then then yeah and then it's time for the all-star break and then off we go into this i still say second half even if it's not really it's not really it's like it the final 35 percent yeah. or whatever yeah, exactly. it comes out to of, it's of second season. half because it's the what's left of the regular season plus the playoffs makes it plus the plus, second sure. half of the year. So we'll just keep calling it that because that's what we've done time immemorial. That's right. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us. Once again, make sure you do subscribe to the NBA front office show here on YouTube, as well as uh, the podcast feed over on Apple podcast, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I, I, I usually say we'll, we'll jump on if any big trades break over the weekend, that's not going to happen now. So, nope. uh, 
enjoy your weekend, everybody. If anything crazy happens around the league, we'll jump on. Otherwise, we'll see everybody on Monday. Till then, everybody, see ya and stay safe.